Girls in anime, it's like a moth that sees a bright light. We fly towards it, uncritical of how toxic or problematic the outcome may be. It's the curse of being a woman that likes anime. Is it a curse? Is it not? Is it a buff? In 2005, I was around seven years old and my cousin had introduced me to this thing called the Naruto run. This era of anime is really interesting to me because this was the first time I was really introduced to it outside of shows that my dad showed me. He couldn't hide this side of anime from me forever. I saw the characters with the big bahanka donkas on screen. Anime would figure out how to show an upwards camera angle to show up the skirt of underage girls while weird noises came out of their mouths. Naruto's sexy jutsu was nothing new for anime fans, but as a girl, I- yeah, that was weird, but the girl can also be a ninja? Granted, we already know how her character ended up. Avatar The Last Airbender also just started airing on Nickelodeon, and I also saw that the girl can waterbend. I get that Avatar isn't an anime, but still, I was able to see the girl be a ninja, the girl be a waterbender. I just figured out that animation is where a girl could also be a badass. A few years later, I was introduced to Soul Eater, and that was when I started to become a weeb. I casually watched anime with my dad. Naruto was just another show that I'd watch that was next to Disney Channel and whatever on Cartoon Network, but Soul Eater was the gateway and into the anime rabbit hole I went. Maka led the show and she was also treated as an equal to her male counterparts. The boys in the group relied and trusted their female team members. And of course, it had the nosebleeds. I also watched Fairy Tale, and yes, there was fan service, but still it was super cool to see girls with power. Now is when you get to go, oh, wait, oh my god, she's doing a trilogy, a trilogy. Hi, I'm Q, and you might know me from certain anime commentary videos on YouTube and while I tend to cater videos to the algorithm, I like to think those videos aren't negative, but more retrospectives. Acknowledging trends that are worth being mindful of, since I want people to be critical of characters and things that they're consuming. And as a girl, I feel an obligation to support female characters, to support that they're written in anime. But on the flip side, it comes at the cost of my own integrity, and it entails me to support the chaotic circus that comes with being an anime fan. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, some of the issues that I have with female characters is provided by female writers themselves. But at the end of the day, I still love anime and I love the shows that I talk about. But why? Why do women like myself like anime despite all that comes with the medium? On the surface, anime seems to objectify women. It seems like a community that doesn't even want us here in the first place. And especially right now with the Barbie movie being out and just being proud of being a girl. All of this recently has been making me think about my gender and how it affects certain things in my life. This video is actually a response or more my take to FD Signifier's video on masculinity in anime. He dives into how anime affected him as a male viewer, how he thinks of certain trends and characters, how it was like for him to grow up with it. And so now I want to do that, especially as a girl who fell in love with anime. How has this medium affected me and my gender? He also told me to make this video, so here's me doing that. Okay, okay, I get it. I have to talk about the anime titties. They take up like 80% of the screen whenever I start a new show. We gotta address the titties. I'm a trigger stan. My favorite anime is Gurren Lagann. And learning that this girl's ass belongs to a 14 year old and it's taking up the entire screen is objectively weird silly and kind of concerning one of my other favorite shows is kill la kill and yeah you know and even with all of that as a woman i can still say that i love these shows dearly the math isn't mathing here how dare i call myself a feminist if i watch those shows how can i say this as a girl's girl well as a viewer female or not this is something that you gradually just accept and kind of understand as you watch anime. This is sadly a trope that's just really, really seen in a lot of popular shows. Anime is a cesspool that's trying to appeal to its broadest audience, which is primarily men, through being weird. And hopefully what I've learned as you watch these popular shows, you just gotta hope that the weirdness and the fan service doesn't get in the way of an actual, like, serious show. Or maybe it'll elevate entertaining shows like Dragon Maid. In Dragon Maid, the big bahanka donkaroos, they're fine because it's a silly show. So the titties are gonna have silly jiggles. I don't know why this child has boobies. Well, I do because anime in Japan is weird. Like how am I supposed to feel? It's unrealistic body standards left and right. But guys, girls, don't let this like get to you. Don't starve yourself. Pretty people eat food.
My family's calling me. One second. What? What are you eating? Guys, let me put you on something that I've been non-stop eating. My family has been non-stop eating. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako were kind enough to partner with my channel and this video and send me snacks straight from Japan. The theme of this month's box is snacks from Okinawa. This is their July box. I think August is currently out with an entirely different theme, different snacks, but so many good treats. These are what snacks are popular right now, while the Sakurako box also has really, really good food. These are snacks from local vendors, local businesses, is from Japan. And this box's theme is Heritage of Nico. And both of these boxes come with a little booklet, a pamphlet that comes with all the dietary stuff. All the snacks are in Japanese. I don't know what's inside it. I don't know what's written in it, but these booklets say everything, whether things are savory, sweet, any dietary stuff, if like you're vegetarian or something. And you also learn more about the businesses where the snacks come from. Something that I really like about the Sakura Co boxes is that every month comes with also tableware. So the tableware item that you get in this month's box, I thought this was a dish towel, but honestly because like I went through the booklet so this apparently is called a uh, furoshiki how would you say it which is actually the cloth that you wrap bento boxes your lunches with which is super neat and cool oh it even tells you how to wash it and it even gives you a little tutorial on how to do it with your lunch boxes and I don't know that's so cool also if you're really really into teas this box is gonna be like your new Christmas gift every month so if you're interested in this box or the Tokyo treat one they were kind enough to give me five dollars off your order if you use code enaq at checkouts so head down to team.sakura.co slash enaq or team.tokyo treat slash enaq and go get some snacks go eat some fun food from japan the treats are so good so yummy and let's get back to the video am i just desensitized to fan service especially since i started watching anime at a young age even for men i'm sure outside of it all you can agree that fan service can get obnoxious but but Ina, guys also get sexualized they're shirtless they're ripped that's for the girls no 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 that's not for the girls. That's still for the boys. That's not sexualization. That's the male power fantasy. Shots of Goku powering up, shirts getting ripped off, Armstrong having a flexing competition, Bakugo wearing a woman respecter. That's not sexualization. All of that is an anime for younger boys to want to look like them. It's so guys can aspire and be motivated to be like those characters on screen. They get shirtless for boys to want to overdose on protein shakes, to eat bullets for breakfast, to make them want to pee standing up, I don't know, bro stuff. Zoro being shirtless in no way in any shape or form is the exact same as Nami's breasts inflating throughout One Piece. Am I saying girls are above sexualization? No. Especially if you've seen the influx of Gojo fan edits with the second season of Jujutsu Kaisen right now, the My Hero Academia fandom doing god knows what to those boys. But that's the fandom. The boys make the titty mouse pads, the girls make their fan edits. But in the anime though, sexualization is definitely seen much more for the girls in what's popular in shonen. And that really is just something that we accept at the end of the day. But also anime and manga has such a wide variety of non-fan service, non-misogynistic content for you to choose from. Something so special about anime and manga is that there's something for me. There's something for everyone. Japanese manga and anime has so much diversity that I was never made to feel that it wasn't made for me. That it wasn't made for girls. I'm okay with watching fan service in shows because I know I also have other options if I don't. Claymore is such a good one. It's a shonen manga and anime with an insane female cast that showcases femininity while also being a balls to the walls kind of series. The characters aren't just strong and have powers, but they actually have their own wants, desires, goals. It's like Demon Slayer, but if women had the swords. And you can't tell me that doesn't sound like a good time. Other great representations of female characters from really great anime, Kagome from Inuyasha, Yona of the Dawn, Revy from Black Lagoon, characters from shows that I haven't seen but I've heard good things, Jolene from Jojo, Noelle from Black Clover, and of course as well, a big reason as to why girls love anime, because there's a dedicated type of series for girls in the anime community, known as Shoujo. Guys? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> you summoned me, welcome mere anime and manga mortals, to my domain. 
but fear not because yeah, I'm not gonna keep this bit up for that long, don't worry. Hi, I'm Colleen's Mongerex, friend of the channel, and I'm here to tell you sweet, sweet viewers of EnaQ all about the elusive category of anime manga known as shoujo. The kind of anime and manga I've loved ever since I was a wee little child, and maybe even you have too. Shoujo manga and anime are series that are targeted towards young girls, usually from the ages of 12 to 25. While many people in this community may believe that shoujo are high school romances, they can actually be any genre under the sun. There's fantasy, action, sci-fi, horror, historical, you name it and shoujo's got it. These shoujo series are also largely created by women and has been for a really long time now, making this a type of medium unlike any other, focusing on series that are made by and for women. Which is why shoujo is so special to many people and especially in nerdy spaces where the conversations are mostly driven by men. There's a type of manga and anime out there that offers an escape from the portrayal of of women as a sexy lamp. They show girls and women as their own people who aren't just there to be ogled at, but they're the protagonists of their own stories. You can read an action series about a girl who struggles with mental health issues, or you can watch a series about a girl who learns from her privilege to help others. The stories and characters are complex, but still easily relatable to anyone as these people aren't perfect and they can make mistakes. These flaws even help give you a deeper connection to these characters. Finding shoujo as a kid helped my own interpersonal struggles find an outlet. That feeling of being unwanted and depressed in my room was released when I found characters that were like me who had the same thoughts as me. You feel less alone growing up femme when you have a character who is right in front of you that is saying the exact things that you have thought. It also opens you up to so many new perspectives and ideas with how much gender expression is shown through many shoujo series. There's so much cross-dressing that suddenly you don't feel like it's weird to think that you look cool dressing like a boy anymore. The world of shoujo anime and manga is vast and diverse Diverse, but unfortunately it is also highly underrated. The feminine perspectives, art style, and protagonists are off-putting for many people in the Animanga community. However, for girls, women, AFABs, non-binaries, and even, yeah, guys too, shoujo can feel like a safe haven. A type of media that feels so unique and special that has cultivated its own visual language to tell its stories. In nerd culture and spaces that that are so male dominated, it's crazy to think that girls have a type of series that is all their own. Whoa, that was weird, but I kind of liked it. Big thanks to Colleen for that explanation, but yeah, shoujo is awesome. Again, I am going to make the joke. Why don't you step out of your demographic and watch Real Peak? Did you know that Sailor Moon could beat Goku? Sailor Moon can beat Goku, did you know that? Look it up, look it up. Also, I can, canonically. It's in my YouTube bio, so it has to be true. But anyway, of course I couldn't talk about why girls like anime without acknowledging shoujo. And especially right now, I wanna highlight major genres of shoujo, like magical girl anime or female-led isekai. Growing up, something that I noticed in Western media is that when people wrote a strong female character. The cool girl hated other girls, they reject femininity. Writers who made these girls basically wrote a man with tits. Am I saying it was the author's intention to write a poorly written female character? No! I'm so sure it was a lack of understanding, but something that I found in anime was the magical girl genre. You could save the world but also not reject or drop your femininity. You can instead utilize it, look cute, and save the world? This was especially seen with shows like Sailor Moon, Cardcaptor Sakura, Madoka Magica, which is a show that really showcases that there is so much more to magical girl anime than just being a cute girly series. 
because it definitely isn't. I swear, this show invented the three episode rule. Magical girl shows never really focused on male love interests other than Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask, but more on the girlhood and deep friendships with other girls. It's empowering, it's important. And another genre that was really empowering for women? Isekai. Yes, high key, women ran isekai in the 80s and 90s. It was mostly female-led isekais. Before SAO and before Asuna had had really unfortunate things happen to her. Before ReZero, before Mushoku Tensei's anime, girls had Escaflone, Fushigi Yugi, Inuyasha, a show that I mentioned earlier is a female-led isekai. Fushigi Yugi and Inuyasha are core animes that like made me as a person. But finally, I think I have to talk about a certain man who is pivotal as to why girls love anime. I know, I'm sorry, but he's one of the good ones, I promise. He even agrees that anime was a mistake. I have to talk about Hayao Miyazaki. Throughout this video, I kept saying that anime always showcased girls doing cool things, and that's what drew me to it. But something special that I also found within anime was that I was especially able to feel really seen. There were certain characters where I felt so understood, and those especially were seen through the characters of Ghibli movies. Ghibli films were often seen as a counterpoint to Disney movies, which we kind of know today are known to make the girls, the princesses, damsels in distress, having no sense of self-worth outside of needing a man, needing their true love. But Miyazaki, on the other hand, in his films, he empowered girls. He made the young girls independent, strong, gave them stories that developed their characters to be confident in themselves. Chihiro in Spirited Away was bratty and scared of everything, especially change. By the end of her film, she's confident in her decision-making. She trusts her own choices and learns to save herself and her parents. Princess Mononoke showcased that girls can be assertive, be messy, be capable of violence. San, Nausicaa, Kiki showcased that women could be whatever they wanted to be. They defied feminine stereotypes but were still able to be themselves. Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle, self-love, self-worth. And not only that, because those characters are amazing, but we also saw them in their most ordinary, vulnerable moments. Outside of the mundane world that they may be in, we see the extra steps of Chihiro putting on her shoes, Shita climbing downstairs, brushing her hair. The girls just have a sense of humanity. This topic of Hayao Miyazaki and his female protagonists can be its own video, but honestly, I am so sure that Ghibli movies have affected a girl's love for anime in some way, shape, or form. I have to say it, anime is cool, guys. It has such a huge and accepting space for women, you just gotta find those parts. Anime is a place to find stories to find yourself in, especially if you look a little beyond what's popular. And I can guarantee that any seasoned anime fan would agree. The big shonen shows that are popular is just the surface level of what anime has to offer. Also, if you like this video and like these discussions about women in the anime space, deconstructing the writing of female characters. I have so many videos under this topic, the male gaze even in anime. Please let me know your thoughts, especially like considering your gender when enjoying anime. Especially if you're one of my female viewers, how is anime special to you? I probably missed a few things, but this is just my experience watching anime. Please let me know yours. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all of it, none of it. Click the link in the description. It helps the channel out a lot and helps me get more sponsors so I can do this full time one day. Or you know, you don't have to. It's not like a care or anything. Mm -hmm.